Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the US dollar Chinese yuan cross over the gold price. And the reason we're looking at this is because we're going to be talking about Chinese gold. Uh, but I brought this up because I want to point out some things here. Uh, this chart down here, this is the gold price and the the line chart, uh, I'm sorry, the candlesticks up here is the US dollar Chinese Yuan cross and then the line graph is, is the gold price. So the first thing that you want to take away from this is that basically the move in these two occurred at approximately the same time. The beginning of the gold bull market, which was started around 400 bucks or so, ran all the way up to nearly 2,000. Uh, a big move uh, happened within six months of the beginning of the increase in the value of the Chinese Yuan. Now you can see a period here where they both kind of stabilized. This is actually the period of the financial crisis. And then once the financial crisis was over or the beginning of the money printing right there in 2009, we know the stock market took off there. We can see that gold took off again. The Chinese Yuan was stabilized for a while and then it increased in value and went down to the ultimate um, high in that, which is going to be a basically a six handle. So it's a move from about uh, 8.3 down to six, roughly a 25% devaluation of the dollar. Now you can see since that point in 2014 where the Chinese Yuan topped and it's been losing value against the dollar, it's moved from about six to about six and a half. Uh, not that significant, but you can see it's a pullback to right about this level where the support was. Uh, so it wouldn't be surprising to see it turn around and move back the opposite direction, which means that it would be increasing in value again, a resumption of the trend. Now, the, the other takeaway here is that it's very unusual for these two to move in tandem. Most of the time, they're moving in opposite directions. Opposite directions here, opposite directions here, a little bit of tandem movement here and here, but now the biggest point in time is, is going to be this tandem rally where uh, the Chinese Yuan is losing value while gold is gaining value. So we're going to come back and talk about this, what it means uh, with the two potential alternative scenarios for the Chinese Yuan, one being the SDR basket and the other being an actual gold-backed Yuan and what that's going to mean for the price of gold. Before we do that, I want to listen to this David Morgan video where he analyzes the movie Rollover because we also have this bill that's pending in Congress about 911 and allowing lawsuits to go ahead against the Saudis, which the whole thing is ridiculous. But again, this is the agenda that they're pursuing for whatever reason they're doing that. There's a chance that Obama will veto this and that it will be overridden by Congress or there's a chance that there will be a pocket veto. We're not sure it's going to happen in the next day or so. But this is a potential scenario. This is a Morgan uh, video that was done back in 2011, but it's highlighting this potential collapse coming from the Saudis pulling assets. We know that the Saudis have threatened to pull their assets uh, and this also gets back to FOFOA and how much gold the Saudis have and how many paper assets they actually have. But this is a scenario that David Morgan takes us through that was in the movie Rollover from 1981. And it's a crisis because the Saudis are selling their assets. So let's watch this. <laughs> Whereupon there'll be a lot of jawboning by the president, and that won't work. Then they'll go to selling gold, and that won't work either. Then they'll have to go to capital controls, freeze foreign assets, stop any money from going in or out, 
and that will be the end of all the markets. That'll really be the finish. Then you'll see a worldwide depression that'll make the 1930s look like a kindergarten. In two months, you'll have bread lines in Detroit, riots in Pittsburgh. In six months, you'll see grass right over Rodeo Drive and Michigan Boulevard and Fifth Avenue, and I won't have done it, Hub. You will. All because you tried to stop a movement that couldn't be stopped anyway. Listen to me, Hub. Money, capital, has a life of its own. It's a force of nature, like gravity, like the oceans. It flows where it wants to flow. This whole thing with the Arabs and gold is inevitable. We're just going with the tide. The only question is whether you want to let it go like an unguided missile and raise hell, or whether you want to keep it in the hands of responsible people. Believe me, Hub, the dollar will hold. Believe me, the system will be fine, providing Nobody panics. So the scene starts off with a trading room in a major New York bank. And the main trader screams out and says, everybody hang up the phone and listen. And listen very carefully. And the scenario goes like this. Listen, everybody. The Arabs yanked all of their money out of our bank. And it's not just us. It's across Probably the board. The board. It means every bank in the country out there is going to be struggling for liquidity, trying to cover those cash withdrawals. We're dumping everything. Treasury bills, bonds, Fannie Mae's, commercial papers, we want it all sold. Fed funds, euro dollars, borrow whatever you can find, up to 200 million. Foreign exchange, no positions. Bullion, grab what you can get. All right, let's hit it. And pray. And then pandemonium takes place, and all these trades start going off, and it's just crazy in the trading room. And of course, you've got to realize that this same scenario is taking a place all throughout New York City, the financial capital of the world, and of course, London and Zurich and everywhere else, and everybody's selling everything they can to put it in the dollar so that they can pay back the Arabs what they owe them, right? Well, as this is unfolding, one of the traders comes up to the desk and starts explaining. Stock market's off 75 points. The dollar's appreciated 10% and moving down. They even yanked the euro dollar deposits that weren't due. First New York is practically down the tubes and gold just went over 2,000. By tonight, that'll be cheap. And he turns around and he picks up the phone and he calls his wife. I want you to listen and listen very carefully. As soon as you hang up, I want you to go to the closet, take a suitcase, and get to the bank. And then it cuts. And it shows a scene outside of a bank in Manhattan. And the banker is taking bundles of dollar bills and throwing them outside the bank. And there's people scrambling and screaming all over. And then it cuts again, and it shows a newscaster. And he says, this scene outside of Manhattan Bank took place all over the world. Last night, demonstrators burned American currency in front of the White House. And attempts to put out the fires led to a confrontation with police. Every hour, from every corner of the globe, there are new reports of outraged crowds demanding action. A bankrupt world seems to be teetering on the very edge of anarchy. the end of the scene but the point is that something like that could happen inadvertently it doesn't take all of the money coming out of the bank in fact in today's market being so topsy-turvy and so skittish you might see a major withdrawal of maybe one percent of a fund somewhere that has a compounding effect especially in an over leveraged market which we've been in for so long and I think the best way to, to wrap this up is the derivatives market 
when you've got one bank in the United States that basically has a derivative exposure that's in the trillions of dollars. I mean, it basically is so vulnerable to something like this taking place that most people don't even, one, realize that it exists, or two, what the implications are. But Warren Buffett, arguably one of the best investors in modern times, has said that it's financial mass destruction. That's what these derivatives represent. And I believe he's correct. Bullion, grab what you can get. So that's the scenario where there's basically a run on U.S. assets to sell them to pay back the Saudis. I don't think this one's going to go that way, but I wanted to play that because I want you to think about there being a different kind of run on, in this one there was a kind of a run on gold, and that would probably be what would play out a lot of those dollars and other currencies would go into gold in this situation. But the other situation I want you to think about is a situation where China decides to do a gold back yuan instead of going with the SDR basket and what that scenario would look like. So this is the official Wikipedia gold reserve. Now these numbers are silly. We know this that the Chinese probably have much, much more gold than this, and the United States probably has much, much less than this. It's interesting to look at the column here that's gold's share of Forex reserves. You can see that the U.S. has a 76% gold share of Forex reserves, and Essentially, I've already shown you in the trade deficit numbers that we really don't have uh, any Forex reserves. We're running a continuous deficit, but this ghost gold, and it's probably gold in the ground. It's They have a term for that. I don't remember what the term for it is, but it, it they're probably counting gold that hasn't been mined yet. Now, on the Chinese figure... I'm going to use a conservative, I think this is a conservative estimate. I'm going to multiply this number by five and say that the Chinese have about 10,000 tons of gold. Now, if you do the math, I think it comes to 32,000 ounces roughly in a metric ton. And I did the math. I'm not going to do it here. But basically, if you take this figure at the current gold price and multiply it out, you get about a hundred billion dollars roughly in the value of this reported figure. So I'm going to say that we want to multiply that by five and guess that the Chinese really have roughly half a trillion dollars, 500 billion dollars worth of gold reserves. So, and note here, two percent. So, 98% of Chinese Forex reserves are actual currencies of other countries. So that gold represents a very, very tiny amount. But when we do the math and we say that the Chinese reserves are worth roughly $500 billion, the question we have to ask is how are the Chinese going to avoid the type of scenario that we saw in the United States in 1971 when Nixon had to close the gold window. Because with the US dollar being backed internationally with gold and pegged at $35 an ounce, we all know the story. Uh, supposedly, uh, de Gaulle parked a ship in New York Harbor and demanded his gold and Nixon refused and that was the closing of the gold window. So any country that decides to have a gold-backed currency is going to have to entertain the possibility that there will be a run on the gold and that people will demand the physical gold in exchange for the currency. Uh, does it have to be 100% backed? No. But can it be 1% or 2% backed? No. It's got to be somewhere where a reasonable amount of gold can be redeemed to convince people that it's really there and that it's possible to redeem it. Now, China supposedly 
is going to have to reveal its actual reserves when it enters into this SDR basket. Now, what's the possibility that China will actually really reveal their true gold reserves? Or how can you know what the true gold reserves of a country really are? As I pointed out before, you really can't. Without having a gold-backed yuan and the ability to actually redeem it, then there's no way to know. So this brings up the question, how much gold does China need to be able to make a reasonable uh, attempt at backing their currency? So if China has roughly a half a trillion dollars in gold reserve value right now, we have to ask how much money is out there that could come and try to redeem that gold at current prices? Or in another way, what would prices have to be with the current reserve that we think that China has? So we have to ask how many dollars or the equivalent of dollars in other foreign currencies could make a run on the Chinese gold? I don't know what that number is, but if we look at the amount of total derivatives in the world and how much money could chase after that gold, it's going to be somewhere in the trillions, tens of trillions, even hundreds of trillions of dollars. Uh, one figure we could use would be the U.S. national debt, $20 trillion roughly. So that's a 40-fold factor, and that's just one country. That's 40 times the amount of the value of the Chinese gold. So what would the gold price have to be? Probably, I would guesstimate that the gold price is going to need to be anywhere from 20 to 50 times the current price. That's going to give us, sorry, uh, that's going to give us a gold price of about $30,000 to $100,000 roughly. Somewhere in that range, we're going to have that gold price. Now, the other factor is going to be the value of the Chinese currency. It's possible that the Chinese currency could turn around here at this point and begin to rally. The stronger the Chinese currency is before this happens, if it happens, then they're not going to need quite as much gold. But still, if they don't accumulate a lot more gold and they have roughly the amount that we think they have, then gold is going to have to be revalued upwards to the tune of 20 to 50 times. That's my guesstimate. And uh, that's going to be a very, very dramatic scenario, possibly even more dramatic than that rollover scenario. So what's silver going to do if either of these things occurs? I think it's going to explode. Uh, same factor, probably multiples. We're talking about four to five hundred dollars silver if we get that sort of thing if silver trades along with gold now how likely is it that silver is going to do the same thing as gold I think it's pretty likely if we look at the chart and we do an overlay yes there are differences but if you look at the performance of silver and gold side by side, we have to say that they're both behaving as a monetary metal. That's going to be the key reason for their movements. Uh, the powers that be would like to convince us that silver is no longer a monetary metal, that it's just an industrial metal, but the patterns on this chart give lie to that, that it, silver still is a monetary metal. Uh, if this scenario occurs, silver could make a much larger move than the 20 to 50 fold move that gold goes to if the Chinese currency is backed by gold. And we'll talk to you next time.